Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for coming and for uh, braving the snow, although it is Wisconsin, so we're pretty used to it, I think. Um, I'm Cheryl DeMars. I'm the president and CEO of the Alliance. I've been uh, in that role for about 10 years, but in the organization for uh, 25 in a number of different capacities. In fact, I used to be the person that would go out and meet with all the employees of our member companies to tell them what the Alliance was and what their role was in being a good consumer of health care. And um, th those were fun meetings, and I just learned a ton. Um, I'm delighted to welcome you here today. This is an experiment for us. It's the first time that we're doing uh, employee, our employer orientations. Um, some of you are new to the Alliance and your organization. Some of you are new in your role. And um, so we thought we would take the opportunity to do kind of an intro to the Alliance. And the reason why we're doing this is because We've gotten some feedback over the years um, from different sources about uh, the Alliance being kind of a unique entity. And therefore, uh, it's not always commonly understood what we do and how everyone can benefit, how we, would benef how we can benefit your organizations. And in fact, we heard this, it wasn't until I got on the board that I knew that you did X, Y, and Z that organization could have benefited from these things. Wait until people uh, rotate onto the board to have them understand the organization. Um, and the other source was feedback from uh, our market research. Uh, big differences in the level of understanding of the organization in their role. And we thought, we just have to find new ways to help our new members or um, people who are new in their role at organizations who have been with us for a while to uh, understand the organization, but also importantly for us to understand you and what your needs are and interests are, um, because that's really what we're all about as an employer-owned cooperative. We are you, and we exist to serve the needs of our members. So um, it's uh, my pleasure to welcome you all here this morning. And um, I'm holding this microphone not because I can hear me, but because we're also, uh, we have people participating by webinar and um, are recording this, I think, for future use as well. So um, with that, let me turn this over to Mike Roach, our Manager of Member Services, who has a different mic. Good morning, everybody. Let me grab my handy clicker. So a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Um, welcome to everybody on webinar who was smart enough not to try to brave the weather. Um, so. Before we get started, what we'll do when I'm done here is do a quick um, around the room introduction. If you could say your name, your, your title or position, and the member you represent. Um, partway through the presentation, we're going to have a five minute break to get up, stretch your legs. Um, at that time, we're going to hand out some folders. What you'll see in those, on the right side are some employee facing documents. Um, keep in mind, these are not everything we have. We have hundreds of different employee facing pieces that um, we can provide you to help in the education of your employees. Uh, on the right side of that folder is information that's meant for you um, and things that we can do to help you. This is being recorded as Cheryl said what we're going to do is put it on our um, internet page so that before we have our second annual gathering like this new members can look at it if you guys have are so enthralled by what you hear today and you want to look at it again, you'll be able to do that. Um, lastly, this is your meeting. Just like the cooperative, if cooperative is your cooperative. Um, so at any point, get feel, feel free to get up, um, refresh your coffee, get another water. Um, the one thing I always say at all of my meetings is, if you have a question, please ask whenever it comes up. Um, there's no silly question. If you have that question, the odds are that, that someone else, whether on the webinar or here in the room, has it. 
um, and we'd like to address it for you. There's really three things that we want to accomplish today. Um, give you an opportunity to, to network and meet some other members of the cooperative. Um, like Cheryl said, one of the great things that I've noticed in my time uh, at the Alliance is the cooperation that members have with each other. Whether it is sharing best practices, talking about things that work when it comes to new initiatives, um, they're more than willing to, to reach out and, and share that information with you. One of the things we do at the Alliance is, is help you reach your goals. So if it is a implementation goal, we want to increase the number of our employees who get their annual physicals, let us know. Those are the things we want to try to help with. If it's we need to keep our total spend on health care this year to under 5%, we want to help with things like that as well. And the last thing we want to do is give you a couple of ideas on how we can do that. Um, again, these are not all-encompassing. We don't have, have time to show you everything today, but those are the things that, that Paul and Amanda and I can help with throughout the year. So, as Cheryl said, the Alliance has been around for about 26 years, and since day one, oh, welcome. Uh, we've been living this mission to move healthcare forward by controlling costs, improving quality, and engaging individuals in their health. Some of the ways we do that is at our core and one of the things that we believe is that you and your employees should have the information you need to make your decisions as a consumer of healthcare at the provider level. So our Find a Doctor tool, which Amanda will talk to you about a little later, does that. Um, your employees can go out and search 50 different procedures and see here's what this provider is going to charge me and here's what their quality rating is. Um, just like when you buy a car or you buy a new TV, those are the things you want to know. We think that when it come, comes to consuming health care, you should have the same opportunities. Promoting consumerism. A couple of things that, that we like to talk about, our Quality Path program, very, very proud of it. Uh, Paul will talk more about that a little later. Whether it is helping you with steerage programs or talking about um, value-based insurance design initiatives, uh, a number of different things we can do there. And at our heart, um, we're a network. Um, it's Heather's job with her staff to make sure that we are getting contracts in place that provides value and fair market prices for the services that your employees use every day. This is um, one of the things I talk about all the time when I go out and talk to members. We are a not-for-profit member-owned and directed cooperative. So we take our direction from you. The numbers you'll see on the, the left-hand side have changed a bit since 1-1, but we have roughly 240 member owners of the cooperative. And I think when I looked yesterday, uh, the no total number of covered lives is somewhere in that 85,000 range. If we have the privilege of seeing you at one of our uh, annual, or one of our seminars or ALCs, um, this is a picture of some of the great folks that you'll be able to see when you, uh, you attend. So I want to do a quick two-minute what self-funding. So for folks who've come off a fully insured plan where you pay your premium to Physicians Plus or Unity or Dean every month, self-funding's got more players in it. So you've got your broker um, trying to set up and manage a self-funded plan can be difficult. We have a, a large number of great broker partners that we work with on that. But what it comes down to is your network, which is the role we serve there, your third-party administrator who, after we reprice those claims, adjudicate them based on your plan design that you've set up, your PBM. Um, I don't know how many of you have watched your pharmacy benefit spend go up in the last couple of years. Anybody? Um, your stop-loss carrier and your RAP network. One of the questions that I get, and I know Paul gets on a regular basis when we go out to talk to people is, well, what if I'm outside the Alliance network? What if I'm at a hockey tournament in Superior or I'm in vacation in Arizona and I break a leg? What happens? That's where the RAP network comes in. Um, it's one of the things that we educate employees on during employee meetings because quite often they don't know that that, that portion of it exists. So one of the things that we put in the presentation to help us gather insights on what you do and how we can help you is the, uh, 
the take fives, and Terry will come up and talk to you about that. So good morning. We're going to take the opportunity occasionally throughout the morning to allow interaction among all of you so you're able to learn from one another. And we're calling these interludes Take Five. So what we would like to learn from you at this point is, what is your one most significant health benefit goal for 2017? And I don't want to go around the room in any formal fashion, so as a member of the organization, feel free to just jump right in and share your insights and ideas. And as fellow alumni, to kind of give commentary to new ideas that are sort of put forth. The webinar attendees, we would love for you to participate as well by typing in the chat function. Is that correct, Paul? Yep. All right. Awesome. So anyone want to share maybe one? Yes, Diana. Is educating our employee population about specifically CTs and MRIs and encouraging them and educating them about the fact that when someone says, when your physician advises that you need a CT or MRI, people tend to defer and, and just be like, OK, I'm going to go down the hall and do that then because they said I'm supposed to do that not realizing it could cost them out of pocket thousands of dollars. And so unfortunately, you have to get to the employee population before they have that appointment <laughs> in a way that they'll remember. And so that cost comparison and, and tool choice is my goal of educating our employee population this year. Any insights or thoughts for Diana? Yes. I was just going to say that ours is very similar to that. We went to a high deductible health plan uh, a year ago, and we need to spend a lot of time in 2017 helping our employees to become better healthcare consumers. And I think what, what you were talking about is something that we need to start pushing our employees down that same path in terms of making sure that they really understand that where they go has an impact on what they're going to pay for the cost of their health care. OK, I think with that, we'll move right on to Heather Oliva, our Director of Provider Relations, who will be talking about our contracting philosophies and our provider network for you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Heather Oliva, Director of Provider Relations with the Alliance. I've been with the organization for about 12 years. And uh, the role of the provider relations area is actually to implement and maintain, oversee, caretake the contracts that we put in place with participating providers in the Alliance Network on your behalf. Um, and one of the things that I think is a, an interesting and somewhat, somewhat dynamic, I think, um, um, part of this is to look at the breadth of choice that the Alliance offers to its members. Um, you know, on the right-hand side of the slide is a list of participating healthcare systems. And while or some organizations say they do everything from A to Z, we do everything from A to U, from Magnesium to UW Health. Um, if you actually count Dr. Zhou, a participating acup acupuncturist here in Madison, we'll get that Z in there. Uh, the Alliance's provider network is comprised of 90 hospitals and more than 7,000 medical physicians. But when we, when we include those practitioners, in addition to physicians, nurse practitioners, audiologists, speech, chiropractic, et cetera, we're actually more than 13,000 individual licensed bodies who render healthcare services. That's an actually a lot of relationships to maintain. Um, as you can see, we have more than 420 chiropractic clinic sites. So it's somewhat difficult to find a location within the Alliance's service area that isn't served by um, a number of Alliance healthcare providers. To that end, the, if you're looking at the map, the area that's marked in, in dark teal, the darkest of the areas, is what we refer to as our primary service area. And the designation of a county as a primary service area is made predominantly by um, determining when the Alliance has contracted with the majority of healthcare providers in that county. 
so we have the hospitals, and then the primary participating um, primary medical providers, so clinics like um, in the Dubuque region, uh, Medical Associates, Finley Hospital, Mercy Hospital, Dubuque. We have sufficient chiropractic, mental health, and ancillary providers to offer our employees a good and comprehensive choice of providers. The Alliance is built on choice of healthcare provider for our members. Um, the area that's marked a little bit lighter blue is what we refer to as our secondary service area. And an area or a county becomes marked um, colored light blue when we have an emerging relationship in those areas, but don't yet have sufficient uh, contracts in place with providers to say, this is part of the Alliance's primary footprint. And then areas that are um, even the light tan are emerging markets for the Alliance, and our growth is largely determined by your needs. So as employers, as your population changes, as your locations may change, your expansion effort, um, our network grows right along with you. Let me just highlight briefly a couple of recent network additions and make one clarification. Um, the Alliance has, had, has added Gunderson Hospital and Clinics in La Crosse County, Wisconsin, an important relationship to serve many of our employers and their enrollees. Marshfield Clinic, located in Wood County and serving central and north central Wisconsin. And then Mercy Medical Center, I need to offer one clarification here. Mercy uh, Medical Center in Dubuque is and has been a participating provider with the Alliance for more than a decade. But the, the reason that this, this actually should say Clinton, Iowa. The Clinton location of Mercy Medical Center is a new addition to the Alliance as of last year. And Clinton, for reference, is located between Dubuque and the Quad Cities um, in Illinois and Iowa, right along the Mississippi River. So that's an, a location in which a few, actually, of our existing members had lives and locations, but they were without um, access to the primary providers in those areas. So we're very pleased to be able to expand our network to meet the needs of our members. In contracting with, the prov with providers in the Alliance and bringing them to you as part of the network offering, the Alliance is focused on creating, um, offering choice, broad choice of providers at competitive value for you. The intention of the contracting strategy is to create competition among providers, capitalizing on the fact that employers are, in, are among providers, capitalizing on the fact that medical providers are inherently competitive. We want them to compete for lives not based on discounts or driving solely the lowest price, but we want them to compete with each other in areas that matter. Quality of care, patient satisfaction. This is the type of competition that we are trying to foster among um, healthcare providers. In all cases, requiring that they offer healthcare at a value to employers um, that supports their being in the network. Um, contractually, we strive to make sure that we are supporting your ability to design and maintain value-based benefit design. As employers uh, within the Alliance, you control your benefit plan design and you can use those tools to create incentives and rewards for your employees to consume healthcare services that are at the highest value while potentially discouraging overutilization and services that have low value. The Alliance actually also strives to um, protect transparency of information, meaning that within the Alliance's contracts, while the contracts themselves and the arrangements with the providers are covered by confidentiality provisions, every contract with a participating provider in the Alliance allows us the ability to share information about quality and cost directly with consumers. Um, that is very important because it is virtually impossible and impractical to expect people to make a choice if you're not offering them information and tools that allow them to do so. How this information is shared 
is largely through um, a couple of methods of distribution. Um, one is a, uh, they can ask for an, a cost estimate, which is handled um, through the customer service area. And we also provide um, information on a number of services, cost information, on about 70 different procedures via find a doc. It does require login, because we can't make that information broadly public. But we do have the ability to release that information to Alliance members and their enrollees. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, some interesting, interesting um, facts about, about the Alliance and its contracts with providers. Some things that you may or may not be aware of. As members in the Alliance, you have access to the Alliance's contracts for your group health care services. But you also have access to the reimbursement rates provided by our contracts for your workers' compensation services as well. Additionally, non-covered services are not a distinction that is made in the contracts that we maintain with providers. Um, unlike other insurers, uh, where a patient may find themselves on the hook, as it were, for the full freight of a service not covered by their benefit plan, our contracts are specifically structured to provide benefit of the reimbursement rate to the enrollee if they happen to find themselves paying the bill themselves out of pocket. An example of that might be a, an enrollee um, seeks acupuncture care, but it's not a covered benefit under their plan. As long as they receive that care from a network provider, the reimbursement rate accrues to their benefit. So they pay what the employer would have paid. Um, we take a good for the goose, good for the gander approach to the purchase of these services. Additionally, the Alliance strives to foster and reward improvement among providers. One way that we do that is um, to create incentives and rewards for providers to continually improve the value and, and um, quality of the health care that they provide. More than 60% of all of the dollars purchased by the Alliance employers in aggregate are purchased through a contract that contains, contains a performance incentive, whether on the physician side, on the hospital side, or both. So we do take um, active steps to reward providers who are making um, the effort to improve the health care that they deliver. Payment innovation is actually something that the Alliance has begun, begun working on in earnest over the last couple of years. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with our Quality Path program, um, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail. But I want to just take a second and um, talk briefly about Quality Path uh, from a payment innovation perspective. One of the intriguing aspects of the Quality Path program is that it contains a bundled payment methodology, where providers are um, issued a single payment in a lump sum that they are then expected to manage the total cost of providing care to that enrollee within that episode using those dollars. This is something that uh, CMS has begun doing um, through some, some joint programs. Uh, the Alliance has adopted many of these strategies, tweaks them some for commercial population, and is achieving great success with it. Um, that actually brings us to our next take five, but I'd like to take a moment and, and see if anyone has any questions. If not, Mary will handle this interlude. All right, we're taking five again. And this time, I think we'll go around the room and have each of you sort of share your thoughts. Tell us and share with one another what your biggest challenge in managing your health benefits um, that you've identified for 2017. What is your biggest challenge you're trying to overcome in the, the coming year? And would WPPI like to comment? Sure. So, uh, of course, the challenge, probably all of us in the room are containing the cost. So, you know, we are starting to look at our plan design. Um, of course, we want to offer the benefits that we are now that might not be possible in the future. So we're just trying to look at some ways to contain those costs and still offer a great benefit to our staff. Mary, could you share with the group what um, sort of strategies you're considering? 
Certainly. So um, we're just in the um, infancy of looking at these um, products right now, um, you know, perhaps introducing something like a 90-10 with our plan. We have a very robust plan at the moment where we have a high deductible plan, a $2,000 deductible for our single employees and a $4,000 deduct deductible for our family and everything's covered at 100% after you reach that deductible. So of course we're trying to look at, you know, what we can implement with the plans, how we can bring in cost saving measures through something perhaps like quality path, just um, looking at a number of different things that we can implement. Thank you. Anyone on webinar, Paul, sending in any thoughts? All right. Let's go to Beaver Dam Community Hospital. Good morning, everyone. I'm relatively new to the organization starting in July. Um, and ironically, that is when their plan year also begins. So we're about halfway through our plan year. And I'm at the point where I'm just starting to grasp <laughs> some of the programs and things that we're administering. Enough, though, I think that education, um, additional education for the high deductible health plan probably is a go for many of us um, and making sure that people understand what that means, um, what the benefits can be. Uh, coupled with that, um, I think that another one of our goals is possibly to put in an additional tier for our prescription medications, um, making sure that the coverage that people had under a previous plan um, is not lost when they go to, high, to the high deductible plan. Would you like to share some insight from Palmer Johnson? I know you're kind of in the middle of a lot of change. Yes, thank you. Um, yep, we are um, in the midst of changes. We just went through open enrollment, but we have a new, um, new uh, um, third-party administrator and um, trying to get everything in place. We have a few new programs for prescriptions that we would like um, our employees to utilize to save us money. Um, so really kind of explaining the benefits to them with education, as you mentioned before, um, and we have um, uh, cost saving measures, you know, cost is a big thing for for our small company as well. So I'm um, really trying to get the employees on board and with trying to explain how if they save money in healthcare, it's going to go into the company bonus. That way I think uh, that incentivizes them a lot to try to use the cost saving measures and quality path and things like that when learning, learning everything. Sure. Yep, so we have um, Welldyne RX, um, and what that is is that's going to be non-prescription medications, and it's going to, instead of going to the pharmacy, um, it's their house. The pharmacy, um, we're able to provide it at a much less cost, so they won't even have to pay a copay. So it's so much more cheaper that we're just going to ship it to their house for free every, I think they get three months, and then if they need to get a doctor's note, they'll call their doctor and then send it on out. So that's one of the programs that we're implementing. I know Palmer Johnson is doing a little bit with international yeah. pharmacy, so maybe Natalie can share that with you uh, offline. All right, Jenny from Aqua Aerobic, would you like to share one of your challenges that you're trying to overcome in 2017 with your health benefits? actually pretty new to the organization as well as my director. She started in September and I started in October of 16. So we're new trying to get a grasp on how everything is, um, is going. But we do have a um, plan in place to start educating our employees this year for the high deductible health plan and add another option for, for some of those for next year. So we're going to start the process now of educating them, getting them comfortable with the idea because right now they're at a no deductible, 90%. So they're at a very rich benefit, but a lot of the employees don't utilize it. And to help you know, kind of manage those costs, we can move them over to um, a different concept of healthcare spending. All right, how about our folks from WPS? Would you like to share a thought? Thank you. <laughs> Um, so over the last three years, we've done a lot in the way of cost containment. Um, we've had extremely high benefit costs 
And so we, our employees have seen their deductible go from at the single level, a uh, $650 deductible to a thousand, to a high deductible health plan at 1500 to 2000 this year. Um, we have um, gone from having a PPO option to a uh, high deductible health plan option. This year, we offered WPS employees choice for the first time in giving them the choice of a high deductible health plan or a traditional PPO. And the other thing that we did this year was we added a, a third coverage tier. Uh, so in the past, it has been just single or family coverage. So we've had a lot of change for our employee population. Um, I think that the, the cost containment measures are paying off and so what I'd like to see us do for 2017 is really look at what are some of the things that are missing from our plan and seeing, seeing if we can start adding some things back into our plan that won't have a real negative impact on our plan. We do have a new guest who joined us at the break. I don't know if you would like to go ahead and introduce yourself, Kurt, from Maranatha. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Kurt. Uh, last name is Oberholzer from uh, Maranatha Baptist University. I'm, I'm new there as well. Sounds like that's a common theme in the group this morning. Obviously here for orientation, right? Um, I think our challenges as we look ahead to this new year, we've got a, a fairly traditional wellness program. We want to gear that up and make that a bit more robust. Uh, historically, our claims experience has been really pretty good. Uh, that trend was uh, abruptly halted last year with some significant high dollar claims and so uh, overall cost containment becomes um, a real sort of A1 priority. Doing that in a more traditional organization where benefits have been really, really good and there hasn't been as much of a consumer driven mindset in our, in our employee group. So those are our challenges. Help employees become aware of the cost of the insurance, which historically has sort of been off their radar. And then as they participate with us and we realize savings, looking to um, pass those savings along. Just one, one add, last year with our experience, um, there was not an increase past, uh, you know, an annual salary adjustment was withheld uh, because of the cost of the health plan. So we really didn't do much in terms of redesigning the health plan we opted as an organization to sort of eat that cost. Um, and uh, so that really means when we're working and not giving an increase, that really puts the healthcare sort of front and foremost in people's mind. Diana from Promega, would you like to share any thoughts? So I've been with the organization since July, got through our first open enrollment. Um, so I've had about six months to get to know our employee population and their specific needs and desires as it relates to health insurance. Um, in 2017, I hope to continue making those personal connections to understand individual needs, but also what I'm seeing is a dichotomy within our organization that we have a large population of employees based in the Alliance area and then we've got our field sales employees. And part of our transparency backfiring is that our field employees are seeing the rich benefits that the Alliance provides in the Wisconsin area. And so my goal in 2017 is to get a better understanding of how we're serving our field population and see if there's any way that we can level the playing field while keeping in mind that some of the benefits we achieve are through our participation in the Alliance. So trying to help our non-Alliance members. And if any of you have insights for your fellow members, feel free to speak up now or on the break, and maybe we can talk about um, obtaining your permission to share email addresses among the group so you're able to network after the meeting. Uh, Paul, do you have any comments on the webinar? Okay, thank you. I think we're going to move now to Carleen Bamer, who is our Director of Claims and Customer Service and a real expert in this regard. She's been in the health benefits field for many years, I think, at one point working at WPS. Um, so with that, I'll introduce Carleen. Thank you, Terry. So my department is responsible for applying the discounts that Heather's area negotiates. And this first slide demonstrates pretty when they go to see their doctor, what they're going to do is present their ID card that explains 
that the claim needs to be filed to the Alliance. The provider will then file the claim to the Alliance, will receive that claim, will reprice that claim, and forward it on to your third party administrator for payment. It takes us, on average, less than a quarter of a day for us to reprice that claim and get it out the door. Once the TPA receives that claim, they're going to process that claim according to your benefits, and an explanation of benefits is going to be forwarded to the plan participant. At that point, they'll know exactly what they're responsible for, and they'll receive a bill from the provider. The provider may send one right away, but what we do is explain to members, don't pay until you get the explanation of benefits, because that's going to explain exactly what you're responsible for paying. As I stated, it takes us about a quarter of a day for us to reprice the claims. Our contracts require that we have claims repriced within two days of receipt. And in 2016, we were priced over 900,000 claims. And on average, it took us 0.28 quarter of a day. Um, breaking it down, uh, electronic claims, about 85% 85, 85 of the claims that we receive are electronically filed to us directly from the provider. That's less than two one hundredths of a day. So as soon as those claims files are in, my staff is repricing them and sending them on to the payer. And for hard copy claims, it's about a day and a half for us to reprice and get those out. Um, our repricing accuracy is 99.77%. And what that means to you is we're not reworking claims. We've repriced it. It's done accurately. It's sent on to the payer. We need to see it again. Once we reprice the claim, we send it on to the payer. And right now, we're able to send over 87% of the claims that we reprice on to the payer electronically. So what that means is some of those paper claims that I've got, we're able to convert to electronic, and they touched again by the payer. We currently send electronic files to 24 of the 30 TPAs that we work with. There are six that we still send hard copy to, and the reason that's done is because they're so small that it's just not economically feasible for them to set up an electronic connection with us. What this means to you is, 87% of the claims are on the TPA's doorstep the next morning. They're there for them to download into their system. There's no manual rekeying, less room for error. Claims are being processed quickly. While the majority of our contracts, or all of our contracts, don't require uh, or don't have a timeliness of payment provision, there is one contract um, that does. And this is unique to the UW, and it's a requirement that they have with all of the provider networks that they work with. So I want to make sure that you're aware of it. Our contract, and as well as any other contract, requires that claims are paid within 30 days of receipt here at the Alliance. So our timeliness clock starts the day the claim comes here and we reprice it. It ends the day UW receives the check, not the day the TPA finishes processing the claim. It's not the date on the check. It's the day it gets the um, clean claims under this contract are defined as those claims that we can reprice. That timeliness clock does not stop if the TPA has to ask for subrogation information, for COB information, for medical notes. That does not stop the clock. Um, tools that we've put in place to help our TPA partners meet this goal every Thursday, in fact this morning, we send a report to our TPA partners to let them know here are all the claims that we've repriced in the past week that are subject to this agreement. Make sure you have them. Make sure that you've got your eye on them. Um, we will go to bat for you and the TPA if something unique happens. We'll pick up the phone and we'll call UW and say, hey, this claim isn't going to meet the 30-day deadline because of a system issue. More than likely, they're willing to, to work with us on that. The other unique thing that we have done in our contract, that's not in any other contracts, is a timely refund provision. And what that does is, if you pay the claim within 30 days, you get the subrogation information, you realize that this claim isn't payable, you have six months from that payment date to get that money back, no questions asked. And I'll tell you, they're quick to send that money back. So what we tell our, TP, or our employer partners is, when in doubt, pay the claim. You're going to get the money back. So we had one member who was repeatedly on the, the loss discount report that we that we see and that we send out. Um, and working with them and their broker, 
they mandated to their TPA pay these. We do not want to lose any other discount. Um, last two reports, they haven't been on, so they have not lost one penny in discount in the last year. Yep, you walk away from the discount. And, you know, with UW Hospital, that can be a pretty substantial sum of money. Um, so that's why it's important for you to understand it and know that it's, it's not unique to us. It's, it's, it's the cost of doing business with the UW. Every network that they have a contract with has this provision. Um, the other thing that we will do for you, um, when we get notified, uh, we tell the TPA that the discount has been lost, and that gives them some time to appeal it, and we'll work with UW on it. Semi-annually, what, what I do is prepare a report so you know what claims get that. Some of our uh, employer members have asked to know right away, and if that's something you'd like to know as soon as UW or your TPA is notified of a lost discount, we'll be happy to put you on that list so that you know right away as well. The area that's under my purview is our customer service area. Um, we are available to assist your uh, employees with any questions that they have from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. We have a toll-free line that is fully staffed. Uh, we also are available through email and through our website. Uh, we can help you identify, and your members, identify if a provider is in network. Uh, when the claim was received, we were priced and sent on to the TPA. We can also help you, uh, your plan members, um, get cost information on any service that they're going to have. Um, so while 70 procedures are listed on our Find a Doc tool that they can look up themselves, uh, we will help prepare a cost estimate for any service that uh, a member is going to have. We'll do our best to give you an idea of what the alliance allowable rate is going to be. We don't have access to the deductible and co-insurance, but we help build the base and coach the member on what they need to do next to really find out how much are they going to be on responsible for paying. Sure. Um, so what we do uh, with our members is uh, if um, not confident in what, what they need to ask the payer, we'll step in and help the individual. So we'll do a three-way call as we move them over to the TPA, ask the question for them, and stay on the line and make sure that they understand what they're doing. So they t truly understand how the benefit is going to work or what the issue is. Okay. So now Amanda Gallman from our member services area, is going to tell you a little bit more about our Find a Doctor. Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda. Is this good, Paul? Cool. Okay, so I am also newer to the in a year. Um, so the Find a Doctor tool has been touched on, I think, by pretty much everyone who's spoken so far. Um, and that's because it's a great tool, and we would encourage you all to utilize it. Um, and for your employees to utilize it. Um, it is more than a directory. We encourage you to utilize it so you can search by cost and quality measures. Um, we have data for over 50 procedures in there that you can search specifically. Um, you can access this tool using our Alliance website. Um, it's got a little logo you can click on. It'll take you right there. Um, one of the webinar questions was, do you need to log in to access this information? Um, you do need to create a username and password in order to access the cost and quality data. Um, it takes you less than 30 seconds. Create that username and login, um, and you'll have access to everyone who's in network for your specific employer. Um, so whatever search you generate, anyone who pops up is going to be in network for you, which is great. takes all the question out of it, which is the whole point. Um, and then, like I said, the cost and quality data is um, an essential function of the tool. Um, also mentioned here is that you can register for employer specific and I actually handle this so if you don't utilize um, the Alliance network yourself through your company um, you can request super user account so it acts as if you are a member um, and you can get all that that information are going to watch a short tutorial video um, you guys have any questions before? oh yep so I guess that's um, Right here. Um, if you go onto our website, you can see a full toolkit of information. Um, in the packet that we're going to hand out at halftime, um, they have information on 
the information that you can send out to your employees and different um, things that we provide basically to you to relay this information. Anything else? Okay. Tutorial time. Searching for a doctor can feel like a guessing game. With Find a Doctor, you can know the cost, compare the quality, and skip the surprises. You can find the doctor who is right for you and so much more. Let's take a look at this tool designed for people who access healthcare through the Alliance Network. To use Find a Doctor, start at the Alliance website. Now click on Find a Doctor. Creating an account on Find a Doctor is easy. To gain full access to the site's features, you'll need to create your own account. Enter your name and date of birth, so Find a Doctor can confirm you have access to the Alliance Network. Be sure to type your name, especially your first name, exactly as it appears on your health insurance card. Complete the short form and click Sign Up. That's all it takes to create your account. Now you're ready to start your search. When you log in, the employer field automatically fills with your employer's name. Are you looking for a hospital close to home? Or maybe a primary care clinic near where you work? Enter a zip code or city to show where you'd like to receive care and click Continue to start your search. You can search for procedures and costs, quality ratings, provider specialties, or type of facility. Searching for a procedure gives you cost information on over 50 surgeries, tests, and office visits at hospitals and clinics near you. Click the Procedures and Costs tab and type in the procedure that you're looking for. A drop-down menu will show you similar procedures to choose from. If you're unsure, Look for procedures marked More Common or Most Common. Cost estimates are based on the amount paid to providers in the past. Searching by procedure is a great way to match your options to your needs. You can refine your search by specialty. Widen the area of your search. Or click the Facility Results button to display your search results on a map. You can start a new search at any time. Just scroll to the top of the screen. Let's search for quality ratings of area facilities. Click on the Quality Rating tab and select the type of quality rating that you're seeking from the drop-down menu. Quality ratings range from a low of 1 star to a high of 5 stars. You can compare quality ratings for primary care and other ratings such as birthing care. For hospitals, we'll even show you their hospital safety score, which is a letter grade between A to F. Find a Doctor works from your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Know the cost, compare the quality, skip the surprises. You can find what you're searching for with Find a Doctor. I just I one noticed as we were viewing the tutorial for Find a Doc, and I wonder if anyone else happened to notice the red triangle warning signs. So just a brief explanation of what the triangle warning signs are next to a provider's listing and how you and your enrollees can use that information. Um, there are certain organizations and entities that charge what we call a facility fee. Um, so when an organization is structured as a hospital, but they maintain clinics that look from the outside like a clinic, you may not, as a patient, realize that you're actually going to the camp, an off-campus hospital location. We are, when we are talking about this, we are typically talking about, but not exclusively, talking about the UW system. Um, your enrollees who access care provided by UW providers may find themselves in a location that charges a facility fee. Fortunately, they're transparent about the locations where this takes place, so we share that information. We flag those locations in the Find a Doc tool to provide consumers with advance notice that if you go to this particular location, you'll have a charge for, for the physician for any care that you receive, but you'll also have a facility fee charge. Um, we do that not to punish or to shame, but to provide options and information for consumers. If you have questions about that, um, happy to talk with you about that offline. 
but would encourage you to share that information with your enrollees so that they are forewarned. It doesn't mean don't go to these locations, but it does mean know this if this is where you choose to go. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Relke, and I am Member Services Advisor here at the Alliance. And uh, I'm excited to uh, spend a few minutes with you guys talking about our Quality Path Initiative. Before I do that, I'd like to, uh, we had a question come in over the webinar. And uh, if you could repeat that question, I'd like to uh, share the answer with uh, the group. Yeah, Paul. We had a question from a member ask about if the username and password on Find the Doc was a new requirement. They were under the impression they had employee access the site without logging in before. Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, and the answer to that question is to access the provider directory. So basically to find out if a provider is in network or not. You do not need to have a password to access the providers that are in our directory. However, and as Heather said, uh, in consideration for our provider partners, if you want to access cost or quality information, then you do need to set up a password. And the password itself would take uh, no more than 30 seconds to set up. It's a very simple form. So uh, good question. Thanks for that question on the webinar. And uh, so again, I'm excited to spend a few minutes with you guys talking about uh, our, our Quality Path initiative. And uh, I know some of you uh, here are familiar with Quality Path. Uh, we've got a few groups here that have already implemented Quality Path. For those of you that are not familiar with Quality Path, really what Quality Path is, uh, is geared to do is identify high quality care, new ways to pay for that care, and then reward the patient uh, for choosing low cost care. And the procedures that are in the Quality Path right now they are all non-emergency procedures. They're scheduled procedures. And the procedures are knee replacement, total hip replacement, coronary artery bypass graft, or a cabbage. And uh, as of 2000, or January 1st, 2017, we've added uh, CAT scans and MRIs. So again, all procedures that are schedulable and non-emergency. There's really three, three main points I'd like for you guys to, uh, to take with you about the Quality Path Initiative. And the first, and I think, it, and really the most important, is Quality Path was created basically to give the employee or the patient the best possible experience for these procedures and the best possible outcomes. So when a provider applies to become a Quality Path provider and to get that designation, uh, we have a department that uh, spends a lot of time scrutinizing their outcomes, scrutinizing uh, their data, quality metrics and data, because we only want the best providers performing these surgeries and procedures on our members. As well, it's not just when it comes to surgeries, it's not just the provider or the facility's performance we're looking at. We're also looking at the surgeons within that facility and, and, and grading them and marking them as far as how their outcomes and performance are. We want the best surgeons within that facility working on our members. So it's a challenge to become a quality path designated provider. But again, it leads to uh, making certain that we are doing everything we can to give the best experience, the best quality experience, the best outcome experience for that patient that goes in for that surgery or the patient that goes into that MRI. Another resource that we have, again, uh, trying to give the best possible uh, outcome for these procedures uh, is an internal position called a patient experience manager. And that's Margie right there. Um, it, Margie is, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Maranatha has a patient that had a bilateral knee last year, has a wonderful outcome. I talked to her husband a few months ago, and she loves her new knees. Uh, <laughs> that's, um, uh, Promega called. We have a consult with Dr. Bowers um, next week, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and that patient is excited. So um, 
uh, it's always a treat to enter uh, the life of a patient and their family as they consider surgery. Um, they, uh, your patient or your employee would call me and um, we talk about the options that they have. Uh, one of the things that we ask is do they uh, have the diagnosis of osteoarthritis? Sometimes they call me and they say, well, my knee hurts. Well, have you seen a doctor? Well, no. Okay, so let's get you to a primary care provider. Well, I don't have a primary care provider. Okay, let's get you hooked up with a primary care provider. So you get those, uh, so we have some patients that go to their primary care, they get the x-ray, and they don't need any replacement. So, um, and if they have an osteoarthritis diagnosis and they can see from a regular x-ray that it's bone on bone, then we talk about, okay, which provider do you want to see? Um, often it's geography that dictates. They live in Madison. They like to go to Dr. Bowers here in town. But we also have a number of folks in Madison even that go up to South Prairie Healthcare. We have five quality path surgeons there as well. I'm delighted to welcome uh, Beloit Memorial Hospital and two of their surgeons on board as of this year, as well as um, Gunderson up in La Crosse. They have two quality path surgeons for um, joints and they have two quality path surgeons for coronary artery bypass graft. So um, it is a, a privilege to enter their life and the life of their family and um, we go through um, issues that come up. Um, one patient uh, I can think of last month, she canceled her surgery because she tried an anti-inflammatory and it was working really great. And she said, if it's not, once it stops working, then I'm ready. Okay, that's a, that's a big decision. And, and we can work with uh, your employees who are considering a joint replacement or a coronary artery bypass graft uh, and kind of walk them through that process. There's a 90-day uh, episode of care. That means anything that comes up in that 90 days that's related to the joint replacement or the coronary artery bypass graft is covered at 100%. So, um, uh, for instance, I had a patient who uh, had some pain in the foot. He had a hip replaced. He had pain in the foot. They did a special ultrasound doctor to make sure he didn't have a blood clot. Fortunately, he didn't have a blood clot, but that was paid at 100%. So, um, patients, I think, the number one thing that puts their mind at ease is they are they understand that these folks are vetted for quality, that they're good. And we can state with, or I can state on behalf of the Alliance with confidence that these providers are good. Their complication rates are probably 1.5 percent. doesn't get any better than that. Um, and then they, if those providers, they have to meet national quality standards, meet or exceed. And those things are like uh, being transparent, uh, including the patient decision making, uh, shared decision support when it comes to MRIs and CAT scans. So um, if they meet or exceed those standards, that's, then they're invited to be part of Quality Path. Um, the interesting thing is, is not only do they have to meet and exceed national quality standards, they have to agree to accept a bundled payment. So I'll have a lot, a lot. Some patients ask me, well, why isn't UW in? Well, they either didn't apply or if they did apply, they didn't meet quality standards. Or if they did meet quality standards, they chose not to uh, accept our bundled payment. Uh, and I say to them, my role is to um, elevate those providers that have already uh, gone the distance and have gone through our, our vetting process. I'm not here to be disparaging to any provider that is not part of quality. We want to, um, we're here to be positive and lift, elevate those that have on the distance and, and apply to be part of Quality Path. Mm -hmm. Any yes, questions? <laughs> All right. I'll look forward to uh, good things ahead. Yes, thank you, Margie. So as you can see, uh, Margie is an internal resource for the patient, as well as uh, an HR capacity when it comes to facilitating and helping that patient go through the process. Uh, both pre-surgery as far as education, uh, assisting as to what to expect with the surgery, what to expect when it comes to uh, post-care after the surgery, uh, and you know just a, a, a very warm touch type of individual. And everybody that uh, uh, has made contact with Margie has uh, said very, very glowing things about the experience. So. <laughs> So uh, again, really um, the most important component of this program is, is going to be 
the, the patient experience and, and trying to do everything that we can uh, to make certain that, that that experience has the best outcome possible. The second takeaway I'd like for you to keep is that Quality Path has a uh, potentially um, uh, a very favorable financial uh, for your your health plan. So there is money to be saved by going through the Quality Path. First of all, to join Quality Path as a member, it's completely free to you. So there's no expense as a member company to join Quality Path. As far as discounts, uh, as Heather mentioned, this is a bundled payment. So discounts on uh, a knee replacement is going to be about $12,000 underneath uh, what it, our discounted average knee would be in the network. Uh, about the same for a total hip replacement, about uh, just underneath $12,000 savings. When it comes to a cabbage, uh, typically it's between 8 to 10% uh, uh, additional discounts. We're going to a quality path provider. And then when it comes to imaging, uh, basically we're looking at a 20% uh, a decrease uh, on those images. So there is, uh, you know, especially when it comes to imaging, you're going to have a lot of utilization. And uh, there's an opportunity for the plan to save a, a fair amount of money by, by joining the quality path. Also, uh, and this, this is again uh, related to the, the financial benefits of, of the quality path, is that there's a warranty attached to these procedures. So uh, with the surgeries, it's a 90-day warranty. With imaging, it's a 30-day warranty. So, and you guys all know that if you have a readmission on a surgery, you know, the plan's paying for that, not the provider. Uh, with the quality path, the way we negotiated the bundle is that, uh, you know, if there's a complication, uh, that uh, the provider is now going to pay for that readmission. If there's a cloudy image or a duplicate image that's not needed, the plan's no longer paying for that image. The provider is. So there are um, some pretty substantial financial benefits to joining the quality path. The last thing I want you to take with you is that there is a steerage component in quality path. So you're probably thinking, you know, well, why are these providers giving these really deep discounts to the alliance? Uh, for these, these procedures. And the reason really is, is that the providers are expecting to see patients that they normally wouldn't see. Uh, case in point, I live in Madison. Uh, I wouldn't consider going to Gunderson Lutheran for a cabbage out in La Crosse, or perhaps Monroe Clinic for a knee replacement, unless I was incented to do so. And uh, so there is a steerage and incentive requirement uh, that the plan will be paying that patient if they choose to go to a quality path provider. Minimum incentives is based on plan design. So if you have a traditional deductible co-insurance plan for both surgeries as well as images, that uh, the plan, the employer, is going to pay for the employer's or the employee's deductible and co-insurance just for that event. So if somebody went in for a knee replacement, the plan would pay for the deductible and co-insurance for that knee replacement. A few months later, if uh, that same individual breaks his arm, then deductible and co-insurance would then reset and, and that employee would be responsible uh, for deductible and co-insurance. For a high deductible plan, structured a little bit differently, for surgeries, it's going to be a $1,000 minimum contribution to their HSA. For imaging, it's going to be a $100 contribution to that HSA. Keep in mind that the discounts you're going to be receiving, the, the, the digital discounts, are far going to overweigh anything that you're paying in out as far as a form of incentive to the employee. And it's really um, the incentives, when we look at incentives, uh, you know, we've, we've got many Quality Path uh, members right now that have been somewhat creative in their incentives. The ones, the incentives that I shared with you are, are the minimum incentives. But you can be creative and in, innocent on top of that if you'd like. Uh, case in point, if uh, I was going to Rockford Memorial for a total hip replacement, odds are I'm not going to be able to drive myself home after that procedure. So some members will have a travel incentive on top of the minimum incentive, uh, maybe a per diem or an overnight stay for a caretaker, things like that. 
you can be somewhat creative, but what we found is, uh, you know, the more attractive the incentive, the more likely that that individual is going to choose a quality path provider. So really, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, the program is, is, is again, it's designed for the, the best experience for that patient. There are financial benefits for adding quality path, and that there's also steerage, uh, there's a steerage component uh, that needs to take place uh, for the quality path. And with that, I believe we've got a short little video. It's time for a simpler way to take control of your health care. Quality path is the answer. It's easy to use and gives access to everything you need to get high quality care that protects your health and your wallet. Your employer provides access to Quality Path, which shows you trusted doctors, hospitals, and clinics for select surgeries and tests. Quality Path is a simple, easy to use process that will give you peace of mind as well as lower or even no out of pocket costs and little paperwork. Access to top doctors, hospitals, and clinics that lead to better results, and a warranty that covers complications or the need to repeat tests. Trusted, simple, and made for you. That's Quality Path, and that's taking control of your care. The select surgeries and tests that are covered under Quality Path include outpatient CTs and MRIs, knee replacements, total hip replacements, and coronary artery bypass graft, also known as heart bypass surgery. To get started, visit qualitypath.com. Learn about doctors, hospitals, and clinics. Watch patient stories and notify us of upcoming surgeries or tests. If a Quality Path surgery is or may be in your future, call the Alliance Patient Experience Manager at 800-223-4139. If you're having a CT or MRI test, you can inform us at qualitypath.com forward slash tell us. Ask your employer if your organization is participating in Quality Path. Big decisions lie ahead. Let us guide you down the right path. Quality Path. Healthcare made simple. Just a few words on the warranty. Uh, again, with surgeries, 90 day warranty with uh, imaging, 30 days post-test. The warranty, uh, basically the, the employee or the health plan participant that has a surgery, uh, for the warranty to be good is that they need to comply with post-surgical care, physical therapy when it comes to knees or hips. That needs to take place for the warranty to be good. Uh, with tests, basically uh, you, it's going to cover a repeat scan. So if a scan comes out and the scan's cloudy and the, and the doctor can't read it, the surgeon can't read it, uh, 30 days post-test, if it's a bad scan, uh, the warranty would cover the repeat scan. One caveat, and even if you are a Quality Path member company, uh, the bundle, the warranty, None of it applies unless that patient makes an outreach to Margie, our patient experience manager. That is a requirement. Uh, when it comes to imaging, you do not have to notify Margie uh, or the Alliance. Um, well, you can notify us if you care to, but they're not required to. So again, um, very, very important. And we have a lot of communication pieces that we can circulate to you and your employees uh, that stresses the importance of reach, making that, that outreach to, to our patient experience manager when it comes to surgery. So that is an important component to the Quality Path program. Okay, um, we, have, we have a reporting mechanism where we can look at your spend. So basically, uh, when it comes to both surgeries as well as imaging, if you've been with the Alliance for a while and we have your claims data, what we can do is we can run some reports that basically will identify you know, where are you having, wh wh where are you utilizing your imaging spend. And we'll show you like the top five providers that have imaging uh, it, within your imaging spend. What we then would do is compare that those prices to the prices that you could have had going through the quality path. And what you're going to see is there's going to be 
uh, a fair amount of savings to, to be achieved. When it comes to surgeries, pretty much the same thing. Uh, if somebody had a knee replacement at uh, UW, which is not in the Quality Path program, we can report out as to what that cost is and then what the cost of that knee replacement would have been if you went to a Quality Path provider. For those of you that are new to the Alliance where we don't have your claims data, uh, what we can do is we've got some predictive modeling tools that can be a resource. So what we will do without seeing claims data is based on your industry type, uh, based on your population, uh, age of population, things like that. We can give a pretty close estimate as to how many, especially with the surgeries, knees, hips, and cabbages, you can expect in a given period of time. So, and that's what this report is basically getting to, is that we do have the mechanisms to kind of uh, either you know, show you based on your true claims history or uh, predictive modeling uh, as to how many of these procedures you can expect to have uh, in, a, in a period of time. And what you're gonna find is uh, there's, there's money to be saved by joining the Quality Path program. Any questions on Quality Path? Uh, one thing that I would love to do is uh, both myself and Mike be happy to field any questions or a meeting uh, considering some of the nuances of the Quality Path. We can share with you the providers, we can share with you the surgeons within the providers that made the Quality Path uh, designation. I talked to you a little bit, there is some plan design um, changes that need to be made as far as an amendment to the plan showing uh, that you know you're offering this service as, as an additional benefit uh, to your employees. So uh, we do have a question. Um, not so much a question, um, just more of an experience that I wanted to share because I've only been in my position about six months. Um, my organization has been with the Alliance for about three years and one of the things that Mike and Paul and I discussed when I first came into the role was this program and they had a tough customer on their hands. I have an economics background, I'm a benefits manager, I'm a number geeks, I needed to see everything because the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the details of the program is, what's the catch? You know, I didn't, I don't mean to be jaded, but it was a matter of, I don't understand why an employer wouldn't do this, I, show me the numbers. I had the opportunity to sit down and see our numbers because I had three years of experience and at that point it became a no-brainer for me from a numbers perspective. I presented it to our employee population during open enrollment because we launched it 1-1. Got a lot of the same questions. What's the catch? Are you sending us to the cheapest provider? Are these, you know, why would you do this for us and waive the deductible? Um, and again, not that that's common with our employee population. We have a really good culture, but this type of thing is unusual in a healthcare um, industry. So we just launched it 1-1. And I can honestly say, so since open enrollment, when they learned about it, I had two inquiries about images in December where people actually decided to wait on their CT or MRI to participate in the program in January, as well as it's only the 11th, it's the 12th of January. I've already gotten another person since January 1st who's gone to the program to utilize CT or MRI. So I feel very confident that the program is going to pay off well for us. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing our first quarter data because I know we also have an employee who's already inquiring about the surgery program too. So just wanted to share that, that, you know, if you're thinking what's the catch, that's that's a very normal response, and I was really happy to sit down and meet with Mike and Paul and see the data. Thank you for that feedback. And really, the program is is truly a a win win. It's it's a win for the for the health plan as far as the savings uh, that can be achieved. It's definitely a win for that employee as far as uh, not only getting uh, you know superior care, but they're also being getting that incentive to uh, to go to a a high quality, low cost provider for these procedures. So, uh, you know, with that, uh, we'll keep an open invitation if you guys want to meet in person and talk a bit more about the program, talk a little bit more about how it would work with your culture, with your plan design. Mike and I would be more and more, more than happy to uh, to meet with all of you. And I'm for take five. I think we're going to take three because we're down to about 20, 25 minutes. So we just heard about an innovative program the Alliance has put in uh, on your behalf called Quality Path, which at its core is steering employees to higher quality, lower cost providers. Self-funding allows you that flexibility in your plan design to experiment in ways that maybe a fully insured product would not allow you to do. Are any of you 
doing some sort of innovative programs or benefit plan implementations that you would like to share with your fellow Alliance members. And I'm happy to pass the microphone around. If we don't use the microphone, our webinar attendees can't hear us. Any thoughts on steerage or something unique and cool you'd like to share with the group? We have Jenny from Aqua Aerobic. We haven't put it in place yet, but we're strongly investigating the whole teledoc concept. So um, I don't know how many other of you may have already be doing that, but um, so that's one of the new things that we're looking at doing for our employees. How many have telemedicine programs in place? Okay, handful of you, excellent. As long as I'm thinking of this and I don't want to forget at the end of the event, would those of you involved today be okay with us sharing your email addresses among this group so you're able to network beyond today? Could I get a show of hands and uh, maybe we'll talk to the webinar people afterwards? Okay, great, excellent, thank you. Any other ideas on innovative programs related to sort of going outside the box um, under that self-funding model? Yes, Diana from Promega. Something unique that we have explored and are looking at expanding in 2017, given that we have a large employee population based in Madison and we have a large campus, we have actually utilized our wellness center to bring in physical therapists and we do that under our wellness um, umbrella. So rather than having people go through our health insurance and go outside to a physical therapist where they're going to get charged, we've wrapped that into some of the services that we're able to provide. And in 2017, uh, we are exploring the idea of, we also offer that with vision services, eye exams. We partner with Valencio. Um, and now in 2017, we are looking at whether or not that's possible to do with a dental plan, offer free cleanings um, on site to encourage employees to do those every six month teeth cleaning as part of their overall health. All right, with that, I'll introduce Mike Roach to take us into the last 15, 20 minutes or so. And at the end, recall, we are doing a prize drawing for an Amazon Echo. So I don't know if you recall seeing that in the invitation, but you're all eligible to win. All right, here we go. So there are a number of ways that health plans collect funds to keep the doors open. Um, one of them is to charge a per employee per month fee. So generally you'll see that in the 10 to 25 or $30 range. What we think is members should pay based on how much, how many services they use. So that's why we came up with our retainage concept. Um, as you can see, when we first started, retainage was about 30%. Today, it's one of two levels. For new members, it's at 3.1%. So the, the calculation on the side shows you if you have a $300 claim, our reprice saves you $100. We're going to retain $3.10 of that to help with operations. After you've been with us four years, we call it a longevity rate, and that drops to 2.8%. Now, these are not set in stone. This is something that the board of directors reviews on an annual basis. Um, but as long as I've been here, which is you know two whole years, it's it's been the same. There we go. So one question we get on a, a fairly regular basis is what happens if all that retainage you don't use it all? The great part of being a part of a cooperative and us being not for profit is that we give some of that back to our members. It really happens in two ways. It's called patronage distribution. Every year, when our fiscal year ends, our fiscal year is January 1st, and our books are closed, the board of directors looks at how much money is left over, and a portion of that is returned to our members. And it's done in two ways. It's done in the form of a patronage check, which is literally a check. It's the best part of the year for Paul and I, because we get to go out, meet with our primary contacts, who quite often, when they go to finance, they're asking for money, to give them a check to take back to finance and say, see, look, 
It's not always about give us something. We've got something for you. The other way that that's given back is in the form of equity stock. So every member has on the books with us equity stock. Generally, that distribution is about 57%, say you're giving back $1,000, about $570 of that, or 57%, is in the form of a check. The remainder of that goes on our books as equity stock for each member. The Board of Directors determines that split every year. Last year, they decided to give back 75% in the form of a check and 25% in equity stock. This, again, is not guaranteed every year. Um, the year that we developed Quality Path with all of the upfront cost, the patronage checks weren't very big. Luckily for me, I started right after that, so I didn't have to take those out. The checks are generally cut the second or third week of August, um, so you will get call, a call from Paul or I trying to find a time that we can come out take 10 minutes of your time to deliver that check in person. Um, because we think it's, it's a great way to reinforce the cooperative concept. And it's just nice to get out and see our, our, our members every so often. So Paul's going to chat with you real quick about some of the reports and resources that you have available. Um, what's it? Oh, our fiscal year is June 1st. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, spend a, a brief moment here talking about uh, some of the resources we have for you as, as member owners of the cooperative. First of all, one thing that uh, Mike and I really, really want to do is to have a face-to-face -face meeting at least once a year. This meeting uh, consists of a lot of different things. Uh, one, we always like to show how the, how the network is performing for, uh, for your company. We go through your claims detail. Uh, we have basically a, a suite of reports that will demonstrate ROI. We can look at um, emergency room spend, office visit spend versus urgent care spend. Every year what we do is we will approach you, ask you for your SPC, and with that information we compile a detailed report, which is kind of guidance as to what other members are doing when it comes to their plan design. So, uh, you know, by industry type, looking at uh, what companies are doing in relation to uh, deductible and coinsurance amounts, things like that. So it, it's, a, it's a very useful report. These yearly meetings are, are really, um, they're a benefit for you. They're a benefit of membership of the cooperative. But it's also a benefit to us because we learn from everybody when we have these meetings and we like to share the experience uh, of other members with, uh, with other members of the cooperative. Uh, if one member is doing one thing that might benefit the other mem another member, we want to share that with them. And that's kind of the whole philosophy behind the, uh, the cooperative in general. Uh, we have uh, yearly on-site clinic user groups meetings. So that might take, it might be a separate meeting. It might be uh, an hour meeting after one of our learning circles. Quality path user groups, so if you choose to uh, enroll and become a Quality Path member, there's user group meetings that basically, again, it's a, a networking opportunity to talk about what's working well, what could be done better. And then one thing that uh, both Mike and I do a fair amount of are our lunch and learns and presentations to your members. Uh, I know um, Mark here said one of the things that he's struggling with uh, is engagement when it comes to transparency, when it comes to helping people become better health consumers. Really, what we want to do in these these meetings, and again, they're going to be tailored to your industry. They're going to be tailored to your type of business, but uh, we really want to introduce uh, some of the transparency tools that we have and the importance of being a good healthcare consumer and understanding difference in cost when it comes to the same procedures. Uh, we also have a better health consumer presentation, and this one's a little bit less oriented on the alliance and a little bit more oriented when it comes to. You know, certain things that you should ask your doctor when you have their doctor's attention. You know, uh, we work, we put this uh, presentation together in conjunction with uh, Consumer Reports. So there's some additional tools that Consumer Reports have that we can give out to your employees. Uh, and they've all been really well received uh, for the most part. 
I know at Aqua Aerobics we did one not too not too long ago, and it was uh, well attended, and and hopefully uh, does some real positive things when it comes to enhancing consumerism within Aqua Aerobics population. You have as a cooperative uh, preferred partners and programs that you can take advantage of as a member of the cooperative. I I'm not going to list the uh, the actual. Uh, Discounts that are having—I mean, approach Mike or myself. I know exactly what the National RX Cooperative when it comes to implementation. We're getting uh, as, as members of the cooperative, you're going to be receiving additional discounts uh, if you want to explore or uh, perhaps implement some of our preferred partners. Again, National uh, Cooperative RX. There are sister uh, cooperative uh, to say, and they're uh, a PBM. And we also have relationships with Delta Dental of Wisconsin and Illinois, Delta Vision, Wisconsin, Illinois, National Network Access, Stop Loss Discounts. This is important. Uh, some renewal time. Your brokers are going to know this when you're negotiating your stop loss renewals. But we get some pretty substantial discounts with stop loss carriers because stop loss carriers know that our discounts in this immediate market are as deep as they're going to get. Uh, and they reward. Members that, or they reward their clients that utilize our network uh, by uh, potentially giving a, a fairly substantial discount when it comes to your stop loss renewals. As Heather said, uh, workers' compensation solution, another important thing. So if you're, uh, if you self-insure your workers' comp, or if there's certain carriers that we uh, have partnerships with that you utilize, you can use our contracts for workers' comps instead of the comp carriers' contracts. What you're going to find is the medical contracts discounts are far superior than those offered by workers' comp carriers. Uh, Home Health United and VaxPro. Uh, VaxPro is a uh, flu shot provider, and we've got a very uh, aggressive rate per person when it comes to uh, administering flu shots. So if you have any interest in exploring any of these uh, partners, partnerships or programs, again, don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Mike. So I'll hand it off to Amanda. OK, so I'll go super quick with this. <laughs> OK, so we offer Alliance Learning Circles throughout the year. Um, our next one coming up is January 24th. It's our annual Wellness in the Workplace Alliance Learning Circle. Um, I know that many of you have already registered for that event, and I hope to see all of you there. Um, awesome events. They're free of charge for our members and their guests. We do um, always offer like a central location for the in-person event itself. This one will be at the Monona Terrace. And then we do offer a webinar for those events as well. Um, I have to read my notes for this, <laughs> but we do. Um, I should just summarize what's coming up, sorry, in January. So um, again, in less than two weeks, we have our Wellness in the Workplace um, event titled as Happy Equal Healthy. We have two speakers, Laura Putnam, CEO of Motion Infusion, and Dr. Kevin McCabe, Director of Occupation and Preventive Medicine at SC Johnson. All attendees will receive a complimentary copy of Laura's book, there you go, titled Workplace Wellness That Works. And we also have a roundtable event after that event we would encourage you to register for as well. Any questions? Okay, our last take five. So I'd like to ask the group, is there one key way the Alliance staff or your fellow Alliance members can support you in making your health benefit strategy a success? Are you thinking of new ideas that may have been spurred on from this morning's conversation where the Alliance can help or maybe your fellow members um, doing some innovative programs may be able to help you. Any thoughts or ideas from any of you in the room? Or on the webinar? Yes. We have our friends from WPS. So um, with my prior employer, we participated in a professional group uh, for 
salary survey results. And as a result of that, what we did is we set up a group on LinkedIn to connect with one another to share information, ask questions. I'm just wondering if this group would like to do something like that. I see some head nodding to the affirmative in the room. We do have a LinkedIn member forum uh, that Lisa in the back of the room moderates. Uh, Lisa, do you want to just share a little bit about how members access that? Yes. Uh, actually, LinkedIn has changed some um, the group forums and, and how to get in that, in that. I think perhaps maybe um, Terry, seeing as we have everyone's email addresses, I can, um, as part of the follow-up, we'll send out a connection request to you. If you have a LinkedIn profile, um, we'd love for you to be able to um, register for that and be a part of our forum. We do have discussions and also um, notifications of more things that we're doing that you can share with your employees. And we love the idea of two-way interaction on that member forum, so we'd love to see member participation as well. Uh, and I know Kurt from Maranatha asked a little bit about health policy at the break. Um, just letting you know, we do have a formal health policy function here at the Alliance. We, uh, Cheryl, who you met earlier today, is a registered lobbyist on behalf of our member organizations. We have connections at the federal level through the American Benefits Council. And we have numerous connections that we work at the state government level, both in Wisconsin and Illinois. So we're in touch and we're keeping an eye on legislation that matters to our members, uh, self-funded employers for the most part. So um, stay tuned. Uh, I think this year will be an interesting year when it comes to uh, health here um, legislation and um, the future of the Affordable Care Act. So watch our website. We will be offering a session in March where John Barlament, one of our trusted resources in this regard, will be presenting to our member organizations. He always has great insights for us. We did just conduct a webinar this week from the American Benefits Council on the future of the Affordable Care Act and what the Congress may do along with uh, President-elect Trump. That will be on our website soon if it isn't already. OK. Thank you. All of it is on our website as of this morning. Uh, so that gives you some information. Do you want to forward the slide just to close the morning? Um, Mike, Paul, and Amanda are all here for all of you, as are the rest of the Alliance staff. So um, as we've learned um, from some of our members, the most important aspect of Alliance membership is that we are your advocates. We are here to serve you. So please let us know along the way how we can help and how we can connect you to one another and help you pursue your health benefit goals.